there. You know, since 7 7, they've always been speaking about multiculturalism has failed. British values. You know, first it started with immigration, then they went on multiculturalism. Then Mark Hell, she says, you know, a multiculturalism had totally failed. I mean, Germans speaking about multiculturalism has failed and speaking about a monoculture. The last time the Germans spoke about a monoculture, they killed six million Jews. So it's very scary when they start speaking about a monoculture. And then you had Cameron jump on the bandwagon. Multiculturalism has failed. It's dead. Who were they singling out? They were singling out one community, and that was the Muslim community, that they haven't integrated. Now I want to ask Cameron, that what you saw on the streets of Britain last week, was that multicultural successful? When you want to point your fingers at other communities, if there was any community who should have rioted, who had a reason to riot, it was the Muslims. You knock down our doors at four o'clock in the morning. You know, you, you traumatize our children. We are the ones who get stopped at the airport for eight hours. We are the ones who get locked up for 28 days. You know, without any charge, you erode our civil liberties. Every day there's something negative about the Muslims. And we are regarded as the failed community. Then if that is the case, then are these people who are writing successful? When will you start saying to them that you haven't integrated properly? that you are not loyal to the country, that you have not adopted British values. What British values are, nobody knows. Were they British values which they were propounding on the streets of Birmingham? When they went past Madrasa, they went to the Barton Armed Pub, just across the road. And they beat people at the light, and then they broke down, broke Barton Armed Pub, threw chairs and tables, caused havoc. Are these British values? When you speak to these people and they will say, no, we done this because we were unhappy with the cuts. Will the reporter say to them, if you don't like it here, go somewhere else? No. This is solely reserved for the Muslims. Go somewhere else if you don't like it. You see this, you know, British values. So when they speak about Muslim not integrating into British values, what do they speak about? They speak about forced marriages. Forced marriages have nothing to do with Islam. They speak about the veil. You know, the Muslim women wear the veil. So if they live in this country, then they should dress like we do. When a woman wears a veil, she's not harming anybody. But when somebody loots and he burns down buildings, then what kind of British values are these? When is David Cameron going to address these people and point out to them that these are not British values? When is he going to point to other communities and say, look, you haven't integrated properly. Multiculturalism for your community has failed. For the whites who were writing in Manchester, I'm gonna say to them, you have not integrated properly into the community. No, this is solely reserved for the Muslims. British values is solely reserved for the Muslims. Muslims don't have British values. Everybody else can do whatever they wish. It is accepted. If you really want to see multiculturalism alive, you saw it in some Asian communities, you saw it on the streets of South Pole, where the Sikhs protected the masjid, while the Muslims prayed the Rabi Salah in the masjid. If you really want to see 
multiculturalism alive, then you'd see on the streets of Deadly Road, where three brothers were martyred. What were these brothers doing? These brothers had come out of the masjid. They were protecting people's property who they didn't even know. They didn't even know the people and they were protecting their property. Why? Because they regarded it as an ethical, moral, national and Islamic duty to do this. SubhanAllah. Who were these youngsters? They were British Muslims. They were Muslims. No policeman gave his life to protect the property. No politician gave his life to protect the property. No BNP member, nor none of these thugs from the EDL gave their life to protect other people's property. Who were they? They were young Muslims who were martyred in the month of Ramadan. SubhanAllah. And Allah says in the Quran, لا تحتبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموال بل أحياهم Do not regard those who have passed away in the path of your Lord. When you protect somebody's property, you're in the path of your Lord. You're in the path of your Lord. When you look after other people, you're in the path of your Lord. بل أحياهم But they are alive by Allah. They are alive. And subhanAllah, look at this. In the month of Ramadan, you come out of the masjid, you're protecting other people's properties, and you are martyred. You are martyred. You know, this is an honor. And then see how honorable the father was after all this. And the, and the family members of the other family were. What did they say? The first thing they said, we don't want we don't want any, you know, any revenge. We don't want any violence. We just want to mourn. Do we just want to mourn over our dead? SubhanAllah. You know, these were values. These were true Muslim values. When they speak about British values, you know, we should propound our Muslim values. Our Muslim values. What? Muslim values are, Alhamdulillah, that the vast majority of Muslims live in families where there is a father and a mother. They are brought up by their parents. We have respect for our parents. We don't speak back to our parents. We have respect for our elders. These are Muslim values. Somewhere they're lost in many of the British culture. When our parents get old, they hit 80, we don't put them in an old age, you know, old people's home. We look after them like they look after them. These are our Islamic values. These are our Islamic values. And if we show our true Islamic values, nobody can point a finger at us. But often we fail. And often there's an agenda out there as well. So you saw, subhanAllah, the Father, you know, he came out and the newspapers praised him. He said, I don't want any violence because what's going to happen? You're going to attack some guy, some black guy on the street, an innocent black guy, and you're going to make his mother mourn. What's the benefit of that? That's what happened last time. The last riot, some innocent black guy got stabbed and you made his mother mourn. Was there any benefit of that? The bigger man is he who forgives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever we do, we always remember that Allah is watching us. Because the greatest sin after shirk is to kill another person. Why? Because if Allah gives life and only Allah has the right to take it. See, Muslims have principles. It's easy, you know, for the youngsters to get enraged. Three Muslims have, you know, been martyred. Let's go and kill some. Who are you going to kill? You going to kill some innocent guy whose mother's going to mourn? You going to take life which Allah gave? How are you going to stand on the day of judgment? 
And this is why, you know, subhanAllah, you know, really, a, a khatib can give a million talks, but he cannot, <coughs> with these talks, he cannot do what these three youngsters did. And that will die protecting other people's properties. But actions speak louder than words. And then the father and their family, how they came out and they were courageous. You know, all the time Muslims are being condemned. That Muslims are not loyal, Muslims don't like the country. I ask you, these three youngsters who were martyred, these three youngsters who were martyred, they want policemen, they want politicians. They want white, they want Christians, they want media, they want BMP. They were Muslims who came out of the masjid who were born in Britain. This is why, you know, no matter how many talks the khatib gives, you know, he can never represent the actions of what sacrifice, and I don't even say sacrifice, subhanAllah, this is not a sacrifice. This is an investment for them in the hereafter. This is an investment for the hereafter. Self sacrifice. Why? Because Allah said, <laughs> Do not regard those who have been martyred in the path of Allah, defending people's lands and properties and lives, but they are alive by Allah and Allah sustains. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give these people. Youngsters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them Jannah to Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their grave or older than the Riyadh of Jannah, the gardens from the gardens of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize, you know, what is the purpose of life. Sometimes, subhanAllah, and it's not nice to say, but sometimes a person dies and people realize the value of life. 